Hello Auggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Troy Lerner, KF0AFQ. He has a very simple question, and uh, one that made me stop and think for a minute before I said, yeah, this will work. He says, hi Dave, I understand that different coax types have different losses. Is it okay to connect dramatically different loss types of coax to make one long piece? For example, can I connect 25 feet of Heliax, wow, to 25 feet of RG8X to 25 feet of LMR 400 to make a 75 foot run, 73 Troy? Let's examine the question a little bit. The first thing we want to look at is what's called the characteristic impedance. And for most of ham radio, that is 50 ohms. Now, it's measured in ohms, it's a 50. If you were to take a piece of cable and a multimeter and try and measure it, you wouldn't come up with 50 ohms uh, from anything. Let's just make that a little clearer. That is omega, okay? 50 ohms. However, if you were to use a... Um, modern antenna analyzer they can analyze quite a few things about coax including determining its characteristic impedance the characteristic impedance is the ratio of the voltage and this is RF voltage RF voltage to the current RF current okay it's just the ratio of those two. In a 50 ohm cable, that ratio is 50. So if you've got two amps and 100 volts, and again, RFAC, these are RMS measurements, RMS measurements at, at uh, RF, uh, not talking DC here at all. RF, this would end up being a 50 ohm cable. Now, all of the cable types that you listed, well, the first one, Heliax. Heliax is serious coax. Okay, it is a, a sort of a corrugated, it's a line like this that's sort of inside corrugated. And what happens is there is a a center conductor in there and the uh, there's a piece of plastic that comes down here and is screwed in to the thing in a helical way to hold that center cable in the middle most of the dielectric in Heliax is air but there is this piece of plastic in there that holds it in place now I've drawn that about in scale. I mean, you can get heliax that's uh, uh, one inch, two inch, three inch, and so on. The key to the answer to your question is whether this is 50 ohms. Because heliax is used almost exclusively by professionals, they might have a specific impedance in mind for other than 50 ohms. Don't assume it to be 50 ohms unless you look up the specs for it. If you want to use this plus something else plus something else, you want it to be 50 ohms. Now one of the problems with Heliax is what kind of a connector do you put on it here? The connector may be very different from the, um, uh, let's see, PL259, because the PL259 isn't huge. It isn't big enough to go on the end of that thing. So there may be a different connector, in which case you've got to come up with an adapter, and I guess my response to that would be good luck. 
uh, you could try DX Engineering. DX Engineering tends to supply the amateur world, uh, whereas this is in the realm of commercial, like a high-powered FM station or TV station or AM station or something like that that would use this. By the way, this cable has extremely low loss, and that's why it's used, uh, because... Uh, although the characteristic impedance, the actual ohmic resistance, and this is DC resistance, or ohmic resistance, varies with the size of the conductors. Okay, and that is a DC resistance, and it's very low at um, useful RF frequencies. So let's go back with that in mind and look at your question. You've got this piece of where you came up with it. I don't know. This stuff is not sold at uh, Walmart. Um, somebody's going to find somewhere where a Walmart sells. Uh, <laughs> <he'll ask me. laughs> go, go ahead and uh, tell you. Okay, so uh, he's got 25 feet of heliax 25 feet that's some sort of a connector here now he's got rg8x let's use a different one of these this one's getting a little dark or light uh, this one is uh, rg 8x which by the way is my favorite coax but uh, it doesn't handle enormous quantities of power and this is going here for 25 feet some sort of a connector this right here with a PL259 on it you can use a common barrel connector oh, I thought I had one handy a common barrel connector to connect this to your LMR400 LMR 400 is, uh, I think it's 0 .407 inches in diameter. I'll let Callum convert that to metric for you. LMR 400 is uh, what I would consider the maximum size cable that you would use. I've got a reel of it out here. And I've got some special connectors that I got from Times Microwave. By the way, Times Microwave. Times Microwave. Okay, this right here from Belden. And heaven knows who makes this. You can get LMR 600, 800, and so on, which is thicker, 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 and substantially more expensive as you go. Okay, now the question is, can you hook this up and will it work? And the short answer is yes, absolutely. Because... The characteristic impedance of RG8X is 50 ohms. The characteristic impedance of LMR400 is 50 ohms. And if we assume that your heliax is 50 ohms, you got 50 ohms all the way through. Now, you're going to have a little bit of a reflection point uh, with the barrel connector because the PL259, SO239 to PL259 uh, type thing there is not uh, 50 ohms straight through it. If you are really concerned about power, use end connectors and then you won't have an impedance bump there. I don't know what you're going to have here because I'm not familiar with the connectors on Heliarc. And, and again, there's no one kind. The LMR400 is a specific cable. RG8X is a specific cable. Heliax is not a specific cable. It's a class of cables. If you get 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 50 ohms, you get yourself 75 feet of, of uh, coax. Now, here is the problem. This is very low loss. Okay. This is medium loss. At HF, 25 feet of RG8X isn't going to mean a thing. It's okay. And it can carry a lot of power, too, up to the legal limit. 
I'm assuming you're not putting in an FM station here with 100,000 watts. Uh, the uh, LMR400 is a low loss cable. Not as low as your Heliax. Okay? So, yes, you can do that. Why you would want to, I'm not quite sure, but if this is all you've got, fine. I'm not sure I would try to put that Heliax into the, the system. Uh, if you are doing an HF station, uh, RG8X actually is fine if you're doing uh, just a normal 100 watts to your dipole or your vertical, multiband vertical, whatever it may be. Um, if you're going for broke and you're going to put up a tower with a beam, use the LMR 400 or its near equivalent RG213, uh, also by Belden. Okay, now the RG213 is not as well shielded as the LMR 400. So the great aficionados of the DX world will tell you LMR 400, forget the RG213. I like RG213 because it is easy to work with. Whereas LMR 400 is very stiff and unless you have the Times Microwave connectors and the Times Microwave uh, tool set, it's very difficult to put an ordinary type crimp connector onto LMR 400 and there's aluminum involved there so good luck soldering if you are going to solder I would go with the crimp connectors from Times Microwave they're about $25 a piece and then you've got the tool set that you need to get for it too so let's see have we we answered your question, Troy. Yes, I believe that we have. Uh, you can use any combination of types of cable, recognizing that there's going to be slight losses at the connector sites because there's a little bit of an impedance bump there. So this will bump up the SWR.1, maybe. Same here. All right. Will that work? This is the weak link in here. If you've got very high frequencies like VHF, UHF, this is your weak link, okay, where you get most of the losses. Uh, if you're doing this at HF, I would say dump the Heliax, use the RG8X or the LMR400 uh, for the whole route. So there you go, Troy. Thank you for submitting your question. Now, many of you uh, have asked if there's any way that you can help support this channel, channel financially, and there certainly is. You can go to dcastler.com slash support, and there are a number of ways listed there. If you have watched this far in the video, that must mean you like what you see. And if you do, I'd like you to consider subscribing. Subscribing tells YouTube that you like what you see and that they ought to show this to other people too. It helps me too. And uh, also, uh, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. Um, and if you would like, please also check like. And until we next meet, 73.